So. Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 3 p.m. on Saturday in Queensland, Australia. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight's topic is citizenscience.gov. We'll be back in 6.8 seconds. Citizenscience.gov is an official government website designed to accelerate the use of crowdsourcing and citizen science across the, the U.S. government. In citizen science, the public participates voluntarily in the scientific process addressing real world problems. Go ahead, Pam. All right, so I'm actually going to go to the website live. This should be fun. Here we have the page and its website is citizenscience.gov as well as the name of it. It is citizenscience.gov. Hi, hi, Cliff. Hi, Cliff. Thanks for joining us. And they have a really nice picture of the earth, helping federal agencies accelerate innovation through public participation. You can learn more here, but I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a bit because there is a little more to see. You can explore projects, join the community, and plan your projects. You can actually hang a project here if you are part of a U.S. government facility of some sort. Oh, and there, there's the URL. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, there is the URL, citizenscience.gov. And uh, I think Jeff read this part, so I'll go ahead and go to the blog. They do have some articles at the bottom here, and I'm sure there's more. And, of course, this is um, U.S. General Services Administration. All right, so what I'm going to do next is talk to you about this navigation. We have About, Catalog, and Toolkit. About has a couple of options, Overview and Community. Catalog has, oh, here's the projects. That's the important part to me. <laughs> and here's where you add or edit a project. The toolkit has lots of things. Overview, Get Started, Case Studies, Resources, Law, and Policy. I'm going to go right into the projects, though, because to me, that's the important and interesting part here, especially for everyday spacers. You can do these things, and there's lots and lots of options for finding them. All right, so they have the projects. There's 493 currently, and there's many ways to sort them by. You can actually put the project name in here. And, of course, you can see them. I think you can see all 493 if you keep scrolling down the page. What's interesting to me, though, is you can view this by status or agency or by field of science. Now, we found out something when we played with this the other day. And if you look at the field of science, and let's say you click on one, it gives you 129 of them involving animals. Now let's say you click on another one. I'm just going to use this one here, archaeology and culture. They will add them, 132. There were a few more. So this sort of works like you get both. You get the animal ones and the archaeology ones. For, for those of us who are geeks, that's a logical <laughs> or. Yeah, it's logical or in Boolean. All right. So if I, if I said, though, I wanted to you to look at the active items with animals, it sorts just the active ones. And look at that, it's a lot less. It's 80 in this case for animals. Remember, we saw animals before at 129. So this way, it'll give you the active ones. That's Boolean and. So it's active and it's about animals. What we like. Oh, and just so you know, this is really good coding on this because I've seen these, um, these selection menus take forever to process mm. and these this is fairly responsive so. wow this is jamming yeah so i'm i'm kind of impressed about this they they either have some really good programmers or they've got some pretty good horsepower behind this that's awesome cool so you can see there are lots and lots and lots and lots of topics here so I have a feeling we're going to start to see some of these in the Everyday Space or Friday Night Show. Of course, we have Science Policy, which sounds interesting. How many of those are there? 31. I really wanted to look at the Astronomy and Space one. Something we noticed, uh, and there's 55, 
We have seen some of these in like Zooniverse. Oh, uncheck the um, policy, space policy. Oh, yep. Or the science policy. Science policy. You're right. Then we get the actual number of 25. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. and we've seen some of these and we've actually covered some of them. Yeah, look, Zooniverse is there. Backyard Worlds I've done. Gravity Spy right. we've done. Right, Gravity Spy. Did we do this one? I don't know. So oh, here's a cool thing. We can find stuff we haven't done yet. And I'm going to guess that we're going to cover some of these in future uh, episodes of our show. I wow. think we have Space Warps. You're really good at guessing considering <laughs> what we have on our script for, <laughs> for announcing for next week. You know what? A little a little mystery goes a long way for, for people. All right. So uh, this, is, this is surprising to me, but maybe this one's... Um, Maybe this one's uh, considered complete. Let's see if we do active. Nope, it's still there. That's interesting. Astro Pulse. I have no idea what that's about. Uh, so, you know, it's it's really cool how you can choose from so many different options. So watch for those in uh, probably Astronomy in Space. There's a uh, physics one, too. That Yeah, there's a physics one. Oh, health and medicine. I mean, these are really great topics. Nature and outdoor. That looks good. Physics. Oh, there's physics. So what do we got in physics? Uh, also active in this case. 10. Oh, cool. Still. And, oh, we covered some of them. But that's a pretty good look at... I, I just see see that MM. <laughs> Man, see Mugwe. Mowgli. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, and if you really want to look by, you know, agency, they probably have NASA in here too somewhere, right? Oh, there's a lot. I didn't even really look at this. Oh, NASA. There's NASA. So let's say NASA active and let's uh, get rid of yeah, physics in there. the physics one. Boy, there's a lot of options in here. And let's just see how many we get. Oh, NASA has 23 going. And uh, so far I've seen one that we know about, of course, Universe. Targeted asteroids. I think we've done target asteroids, no. right? No? Oh, we haven't. Oh, so we have a lot more fun stuff to, to look at here. Mm -hmm. Aurorasaurus. I think I've seen that over on Zooniverse. Did we actually cover it? I don't think so, because we've been doing mostly space stuff, and yeah. NASA has some Earth-looking Earth stuff that they're looking at here, too. Right, which isn't quite as interesting to me, but it's very cool. Uh, and you can download these things. There's a couple different options there. Let's uh, take a look back at the overview. I think they actually explain a little more in depth about this site and what it's, where these come from, that kind of thing. Oh, there's a nice video. Crowdsourcing. Got it. All right. So then we can go look at. Oh, and if you guys, I don't know if the cam if the mic's picking it up, but if if you hear wind noise <laughs> and windows rattling, that's because we're in Southern California and we're experiencing what they call the Santa Anas, which is a really heavy wind off of the desert and it it blows at about 30 to 40 miles per hour except these ones were cold usually they're hot yeah ah what does scott say this, right. this looks fascinating it is fascinating scott i haven't really delved into it too much i wanted to talk to you about it tonight uh, and then we'll talk about projects in the future we have covered some of them in, in previous episodes we will cover more in future episodes. All right, so if you want to be part of the community, let's see what this says. Oh, and then there's some more of them. Uh, I think you're going to want to read this. I was kind of hoping they had sort of a, a forum um, aspect to, that you could join. Uh, but I see that there is a couple of other places. And uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty more to go, folks. If you really want to to participate in some kind of citizen huh. science project. Santa Ana. <laughs> yeah, you must be out here too, Aviva. <laughs> yeah. hey, David. Oh. Oh, hi, David. Welcome. Lovely seeing you here. Where does the money come from to pay those involved in citizen science? Well, if you mean setting up the projects, it comes from whatever organization funded that study. As for paying the people doing the citizen science, um, it's volunteer. 
just like the Zooniverse stuff. You um, you don't get paid to to do it. You just enjoy participating in in the science. Um, in so yeah, smaller. each of I'm sure each of the agencies are going to have their own pool of money for the project itself. <laughs> The oh, Sananas do not oh, squeak. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. I, you mean the windows, <laughs> the screens rattling, not squeaking. Yes. Yeah, yes. Right. I, I When I saw that cliff, I, I was thinking you were saying that the windows squeaking, that must be an Australian thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they talk about this is developed out of the partnership between the U.S. General Services Administration and the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars, Wilson Center. A trust instrumentally of the U.S. government. So, so this is government money. Yeah. Oh. Um. Huh. Well, I want that job. Yeah. Um. They might be referring to something else. We, we've been referring to citizen science as volunteer crowdsourcing um, stuff. So that would be a really nice. I think that they just mean civilian scientists. Is my guess, David. But I don't know for sure. Yeah, I'm very curious to know where you found that. I have a feeling that this video will tell you more. I have not seen oh. it yet. It's above you. Oh, <laughs> that, that's right. They moved. Yeah, they moved. <laughs> so each of the agencies have people that have worked on these projects and created them and are listing them here. So, oh. yeah. And David or Daniel says there's also a cryptocurrency that rewards distributed science projects called gridcoin.us. Never heard of that. I'll have to look at that, Daniel. Maybe we'll thanks, Daniel. We'll uh, we'll take a look. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. What else do we have? I saw another one. Yeah, it must be a government payment. I don't know. I'm thinking that yeah, I don't to be perfectly honest, David, I don't know at all. Um I'll have to look into that because my guess, and it's just a guess, is that th they're just talking about regular scientists that are paid by the projects. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, if you get involved in any of these things thinking that you're going to get paid, yeah, it's not not likely. I was wondering if maybe someday you could be, you know, useful and valuable, valuable enough that they would offer you or say, here's a position you could you could go for. And then yeah. you would be part of the project on that side of it. But the citizen science part side of it is basically you're bored. You come in here, you do a little bit of the work, and you help out scientists with their projects. That's the way I understand citizen science in particular. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I noticed playing with this site is that all the projects seem to be run themselves. They're not. It's not like Zooniverse where they're all run by Zooniverse. And so you have the same tools. For, oh, so they're for all different they're unless all different. they're on Zooniverse. Right. Whereas Zooniverse, you know, you have that has built in tools for um, for talking to the project runners. You know, you can get on the forum and talk to people who are probably involved in the project, you know, in a more in a you know, in a deeper way. So you could actually get known there. So maybe if you if you're on Zooniverse and you're doing a lot of good work. You might be able to get known there and possibly um, use that as a contact source to get a regular job. I don't know. We haven't dug into this one yet enough. Yeah, tonight's just the overview of the site. Yeah. And I, I'm totally open to talking about how people can get involved so that they can get paid for things like either starting a business or working somewhere. I'm absolutely open to that too, David. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, well both you and David are... Um, are now doing um, Star Party at Your Homes. Yeah, exactly. Getting paid for that. So that's cool. So you want to delve into these more, and, and maybe we, we'll talk about it too in the future, but this was, this is a really huge site. There's lots and lots of stuff here. We just wanted to do an overview tonight. Yeah. Um, oh, in, the, in this case, I think that a lot of the projects are open to anyone in the world. Now, if you want to look at a specific project, you want to check and see if they will allow someone who's outside the United States, for example, because these are U.S. government agencies. 
I'm pretty sure that's that's the constraint for who's developing and hanging these projects here. Well, if you go back to catalog, one of the things that I saw here, yeah, view projects. Uh huh. One of the things that I saw in there is go go here geographic scope. If you notice some of the like oh yeah some of them like the what top middle well, one. Well, no, but that that's the project scope. Right. That but that might oh yeah. I was wondering if that was who who was allowed to be involved in it. No, this is where the, the this project talks about New York, New Jersey, Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. So that okay. that's the projects, but I think within and I forget where I saw it. Sorry, uh, there are things that say this is something available to anyone in the world, and if it's constrained to the United States, for example, they might have that in there too. I'm not absolutely certain. We'll probably look at that on a case by case basis when we delve into the projects themselves. Don't you think, Jeff? Yes. And um, Aviva says, what's a star party? Ooh, great question. Thank you so much. A star party is one of the parties you are encouraged to crash. And you can go and you can spend time with people that have telescopes and binoculars and all kinds of cool stuff like that set up. And if you're very kind and friendly and take care of their equipment, most people will let you look through their telescopes and binoculars at the objects that they're viewing. And a lot of people get together and do this on a fairly regular basis. I used to hold one every month and last uh, March of 2020, things really changed. And so I had to stop for a while. I'm hoping to get back into that at some point. Uh, but yeah, it's generally something local. So you would go there and sometimes people actually have started to have online virtual star parties and they would point their telescope and have a camera that broadcasts out to the world somehow. And that's a way you could see that too. So yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> okay. And Scott says, I I marked rocks on a picture of Ben who <laughs> took me over an hour for one photo, but it was interesting. Yeah. I that, heard so many rocks on Ben <laughs> Yes. I heard about that. Well, congratulations. And thank you for your time. Yes. <laughs> that was an important project. Cliff, um, only when the weather is right. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Uh, there are telescopes as well, Aviva, uh, that you can direct from home. I've uh, we did an episode about that. Do you remember when we did that? That was last year, I think. It right? was last year, and yeah, I don't remember exactly, but it was. I don't even remember what we called it. We'll have to look at that. Um, but it's in one of our past ones, and. I think it's fairly obvious from the title. I just, my mind's blanking on the title of it. Yeah. Check last year. And it looks like you're in the YouTube channel. So you can browse through the various episodes from the past, especially past last year. So there's, there's a little bit of constraint for you, but I think it was last summer, fall, like, like in there. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that helps. And uh, maybe someday, well, and, and you're in there, I'll try and come back and, um, and give you the exact episode um, in the chat, in the chat later in YouTube. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's go back to this. We've got the add or edit a project. And I'm sure this is, yeah, projects must be conducted by or have support funding or in kind from at least one U.S. federal agency to appear in the catalog. So they talk about adding a new project, editing a project. I think you actually have to Tell them what you want changed, and they will make the changes once it's on this website. So, so you can't add a project just to add a project like the quantum dynamics of effect of missing socks in a dryer, huh? Well, you know, if you can get funding or in kind for it, I expect you could. <laughs> All right, let's see what's in the toolkit. They have an overview, and so they talk about getting started, case studies. That's pretty cool, and resource library. I think that's it for this page. Oh, and about the toolkit. So they talk about the toolkit. And there's more to read. And I would say if you want to come in here, just delve into it a little bit. Delve with support collaboration. More than 25 federal agencies in collaboration with the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, the Federal Crowdsourcing and Citizen Science Community of Practice, CCS, and GSA's Open Opportunities Program. So this is a really useful site. I'm really loving 
it's very basic. It's very simple, but that means it's fast. It's, it's like we saw with the projects. It's really loading fast, which is wonderful. All right, getting started. Basic steps for your project plan. And I think this is on the scientist side where they are going to hang a project on here for regular folks to come and help with. The citizen scientists, you know, come and help with. And so there's there's four steps, five steps, sorry. And they tell you how to do it. So if you're a scientist and you want some help and you're part of a federal program, you can check here. All right, and then the case studies, this is pretty cool, I thought. They actually um, share with you what some of these already, you know, look like. So you can get an idea if you want to hang a project here, uh, what, what the possibilities are. And resources. I really, really like all these links. What is a citizen science? How can I use citizen science? So there's really a lot of good stuff in here. Yeah, look at this Galaxy Zoo. That's cool. Yep. Community-based projects. It just goes on and on and on. Field-based. Serious games. There's even games. Isn't that cool? Funding. Project inventories. Implementation of federal prize and citizen science authority reports. So there's lots and lots of support on this side as well. Yeah, did you see something? Um, right. Oh, yeah. I thought I saw on one of these just a list of other citizen science um, websites and so we might be looking at that i don't i forget where it was in here but I, well this is definitely a great a great resource for us now yeah um so yeah we're should be seeing more than just zooniverse but when we're looking for a citizen right. science project <laughs> we're like there's got to be more stuff out there so we went we went looking and here's what we found yeah <laughs> yeah zooniverse is great but there's more stuff out there yeah actually zooniverse is terrific all right, so let's see what else is in here. I think there's one more thing. Yeah, law and policy. So, uh, yeah, plenty to look at here. If you like re reading legal documents, hey. Yeah, have at it. Enjoy. Absolutely. All right, let me... So that kind of covers this website. And um, let's see what... <laughs> to get back to our, our page here. Here we are. Oh, here we go. <laughs> if you like space, you might like Star Party at your place. Let me come to you for your next event or an evening of stargazing with your friends and family. I've been involved with this since 1991, and I have the equipment to bring to you for a nice evening under the stars. Some limitations may apply, like location and the phase of the moon. Full moon, not so great. Uh, the weather is a factor as well. And uh, if you would like to know more, call or write today. It's coming. Yes, it's coming <laughs> to learn more. I work from home. I'm available pretty much all the time. Thanks so much. Okay, some stellar events this week. January 28th through February 4th. Globet Night is still going. Um, the current, current round began January 24th and ends February 2nd. So this week, 2022. In both the Southern and Northern hemispheres were looking for the constellation Orion. Um, National Dark Sky Association says every year the globe at night raises awareness about the impact of light pollution by inviting community scientists to measure and submit night sky brightness observations. Yeah, we covered globe at night a while back too. Mm -hmm. That's a whole episode. Yeah, January 29th. Um, oh, new comment. Um, oh. Ah. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Is it raining? I hope not. <laughs> you had enough rain for a little while. Yeah, right now, Cliff, it's really, really clear if you can keep your scope up, right? <laughs> the, the wind's a little bit heavy for that. Um, January 29th, Mars and the moon are in conjunction. And Venus and the moon are in conjunction. Don't know why they didn't just say Mars, Venus, and the moon are in conjunction. But there you go. It's, it'll be in the morning before sunrise. Look east. Um, January 30th, Mercury and the moon are in conjunction. Um, and Pluto and the moon are in conjunction. Again! Okay. Um, of course, not going to be seeing Pluto much, but hey. Um, not naked eye, certainly. <laughs> no. Not unless someone plucked it out and put it on, on New Horizons. 
and just float it past there. Um, of note, NASA's private astronaut mission to the International Space Station launches in February. Yep. Um, and they had a press release about it December 13th, 2021. And it says it's released 21171, which makes me think that there's at least 171 press releases in 2021, whatever might have come out between the 13th and the end of the month. Um, and it says NASA has selected Axiom Space for the second private astronaut mission to the International Space Station. So I added that link as well to the chat cool. to make it clickable so you can go look for yourself. Yeah. NASA will negotiate with Axiom on a mission order agreement for the Axiom Mission 2, AX2, targeted to launch between fall of 2022 and late spring 2023. So they're picking someone now and they'll launch mm -hmm. in Eventually. almost a year, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe within a year. Mm -hmm. January 31st is the new moon. I almost said February 31st, <laughs> which would be a neat trick. Um, Different planet. <laughs> yeah. February 1st, Saturn and the moon are in conjunction. February 2nd, weekly space hangout with Dr. Cyan Proctor, scientist, artist, and inspiration for astronauts. So that, that should be good. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Also, Jupiter and the moon are in conjunction. Um, the moon's getting really, really popular this, this week. It's just a slut. <laughs> it goes from one planet to another. <laughs> um, Sometimes it tours the planets, yes. <laughs> do see do um, <laughs> Oh, what's Cliff got to say? Hello. Oh, and the web is in place. Yep. Yeah, yeah. J I forgot to put that in our notes. James Webb Space Telescope reached L2, Lagrange Point 2, on the 20, 24th, 25th. I... I mm -hmm. heard, I heard both. Yeah. So and yeah, about a month. It took a month to get from here to there. Yep. And it's going to take a couple months to get um, good pictures back. But yeah, I don't they, think they, we'll they, see. They say June, July. I'm thinking mm -hmm. we might see a first light sometime before then. Mm, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. But I think the best ones are going to be in about a year. Yeah. Okay. So February 3rd, Neptune and the moon are in conjunction. February 4th. Friday night show. Back to Friday night. <laughs> a couple of projects from the citizenscience.gov, which we just covered. And David, um, I've been using an app to check out some of our various night sky observing sites. Very surprising when you see your region's portal number. It's a free yep. app. Yeah. Yep. It's we can see the Milky Way galaxy from our local park over here. Yep. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, we use what what site do you use to um to find out what the Oh, I, I look at the clear sky chart. Unfortunately, it is constrained to the U, the North America. Uh it does give us sort of the astronomers weather including stuff like clouds and transparency and seeing and smoke and humidity. I mean, it, it's it's wonderful. Um we could talk about that at some point. Unfortunately, it isn't for the whole world. Hope not the ones on Facebook. <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to. Cliff, you better tell us. Okay. So you got one more. Oh, also um, on Friday is Saturn and the Sun are in conjunction. I suspect that you'll only be able to see one of those. Yeah. Um, so we do have some ongoing events, including something new. The European Space Agency created something called Build Your Web Challenge. You can get creative and build your own model of the James Webb Space Telescope using any materials you like. I'm going to go into this site just a little bit because I think this is really cool. And I do believe this is good for the entire planet. There's I'll, the I'll, website. I'll put that in the, in the notes so that you can see it. It's a bit long and hairy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I put it up for 10 seconds. So it's click. Yeah. So type fast. <laughs> nah. It'll be clickable from the, from the chat here. Oh. Oh, the picture. Oh, he's referring to the first light picture of. Oh, from... right. Yes. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that, Cliff. Thank you so much. All right. So submit your web challenges. They want you to fill in this form and submit your web challenge projects. 
and uh, that's to the European Space Agency's education team. The selected projects will be displayed in a gallery on the ESA education website. You want to add in your name, uh, and it goes teacher or parent name, uh, then their email, the country, and it doesn't say, you know, just Europe or just United States or anything. So I'm going to go with the whole planet. So if you are somewhere in the world, and you meet these criteria because it is for young people school name name of student or students and the ages of the students as you can see here they've got a slider and it goes from 6 to 19. it's kind of a curious set but anyway uh you can upload your project and there's three different aspects to it fold your web build your web pixel your web i'm guessing that's about pictures all right so let's see they should uh only Oh, so you don't want to have any people or identifying information in your images that you share. Uh, so which of the ones do you want to join? See, so if you choose them here, then you get a place to drop or um, upload your files. And it changes for each one of them. My, my guess is Fold Your Web is kind of some kind of origami type of thing. Build Your Web is like the one that you showed where you construct something. And Pixel might be just creating um digital images well that's a good point you know what you can ask they have an email right at the bottom here but let me go ahead and finish up because you must consent to share your entry and that's just clicking it toggles between yes and no when you click right over here and by submitting an entry to the esa education web challenges i confirm that i have read and agreed to the esa framework on personal data protection and consent to the processing of my data and the student's personal data if, if applicable by or on behalf of the agency as mentioned in the ESA education. Oh, and that's actually a clickable link right there too. So you could oh, learn more. I should have made that so that it's easier to see that it's clickable. Yeah, but... well, the conventions are different in different places, I'm sure. And depending on which marketing weenie is designing your website. <laughs> so you consent and then you hit the submit button. Again, if you want uh, more information, you go ahead and uh, ask them. And so I thought it was interesting because we got this from our friends over at, let me look at this for quick first. It's the Alpo Use Program. It was really kind of cool to find it there. And the, someone shared one that it looks like it's entirely made of food. Although it looks like that's particle board back there. I don't know. It looks like crackers to me. In any case, really, you can make this out of anything, apparently. So have fun. <laughs> and, uh, oh, we have a page to share with the, fa the Facebook page from oh, the Alpo Youth Program. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, fill in the form and hit submit, and you're good to go. <laughs> uh, right. to, uh, I'm going to um, – I'll put that in chat. Awesome. Okay. And, of course, we've talked about the Design Moon Digging Robots, Lunabotics, Junior contest from NASA. They they want young engineers to help design a new robot concept for an excavation mission on the moon. You can enter art if you're the right age. That's K through 12 in the United States. United States, sorry. Uh, or be a judge. I'm not sure if you have to be in the United States to be a judge or not. The winner from each category will be announced March 29th, 2022. And we still have the nominated student with perseverance. The second round opens February 1st. It goes to the 28th. Sixth through eighth grade students can be recognized from private schools, public schools, and homeschooling. There are four rounds of total. And the awards each time are a special message from NASA's Perseverance rover, a chat with the rover team members from Mission Control at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and an award pack of printed materials. I think that's pretty cool. We have a link for that, too. Let's see where to go. Oh, here. There it is. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Yep, I stepped all over your comments. Sorry, Cliff. Oops. Yeah, I thought it was going to be there. Again. Um, we'll be working on a video on astrophotography for you when the weather hey. gets better. Oh, great. Right. Yeah. yeah, we talked about that. And it's been cloudy ever since. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it was my fault. What, the cloudy is your fault? Well, no, we talked about that, and he was going to create it, and he hasn't been able to since. <laughs> oh, and let's get that... Um, um, perseverance um, URL into chat too. So cool. Thank you, go. Jeff. So you're up. Oh, okay. If you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, or astronomy, we'd love to share our live. Join us again next Friday 
on February 4th when we'll talk about two projects from, um, from citizenscience.gov. First one is target asteroids. Um, and unlike the Zooniverse ones where you're working with other people's pictures, you're taking the pictures. So Cliff, if the, cool. if the weather ever clears up, this is people, they need an eight inch telescope or, or bigger Ooh. and a CCD camera. And, um, and this is for um, creating images that you can use to spot asteroids. So do they have to be new images or can you use previously I don't know. captured images? Okay. Well, I guess tune in next week. Yep. Jeff will find out by then with any luck. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it yeah. wasn't my fault. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I feel better now. And um, David, a comment made earlier. And uh oh, did we miss one? Sorry. Yeah, here, let's see. Um, let's see if I can. What it was a it was David's comment? It must be David's, right? I wouldn't know if somebody else made a comment. Oh, there have been. Ah, oh, yeah. It's nice guy, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought we saw that one. I thought I that's not the one, is it? <laughs> oh, um. I got you got a couple there. Did we see two at that point? Yes. Oh. Yeah. We, um sorry, Dave. Would you put it again and and we'll we'll flash it up there for you? Yeah, because I'm not seeing sorry. That this is the latest one aside from your most recent one. So um yeah, I don't know. Very sorry. We really do appreciate you being here, Cliff and David and who else did we have? Aviva and Scott and Daniel. Daniel. Oh, Daniel, right. Dan. He's he's just down the road here. <laughs> yeah. yeah we, could we could throw something in his, in his house from here. Um, All right. Okay. You want to tell him about the other one that you're going to talk about yeah. next week? Well, I think I need to. Did mm -hmm. I do that? No, you, you talked about target asteroids. Yep. So I, I know yeah. you're going to have fun with this. You got to okay. do it. <laughs> yeah, because um, the target asteroids. There's not much that I can really see about it to tell people about, but I thought it was really interesting to show people. But you have to um, register with them, and then it takes them up to a week to get back to you. And so, mm. um, and so then you can learn more about it. But I'll talk what I can. But just because I was looking for more, I saw another project <laughs> out there with, and the, the the name of it is Boink, and I'm just gonna have to do it. You just, just can't avoid having that much fun. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so um, so next week, we're going to be talking about target asteroids and boink. And on that note, <laughs> uh, unless we see David's comment. Did we find David's comment? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, sorry. David, can you share it again? We'll hang around for three, two, one more seconds. Maybe a little more. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You want to talk about any future guests or? Oh, well, I'm in talks with a whole bunch of people. We just got to nail them down for a date. We'll see what happens. You know, it's harder for them to run away once you nail them down. No, it is. Oh, Dave's got something. I saw something show up. Oh. Happened to me a few times. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Um, God, I, I try. We try not to miss any. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, I just scrolled up through them and. Um, and that's, that was it. So, um, oh, I, I wonder if we're having a disconnect between the site we're broadcasting to and, 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 and getting the comment back to us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know exactly how that works. Dave. Yeah. After, after the show, we're going to, we'll look for more comments from you yeah. in Facebook to see if, or no, you're in YouTube. So. We'll look in YouTube, see if there are comments there that we can't see on StreamYard here. And it's weird because the YouTube comments do not show up right away. So I have to go back in the next day or two and look for them again. So I've started to do that now, too. I didn't I didn't quite realize that. I thought they disappeared. Uh, but I think they do show up eventually. Yeah, can we, can we take a little bit? Oh, talk a little bit about it. <laughs> uh, what would you like to know? <laughs> Maybe we'll do a show about that. We'll do like question and answers. We do actually have open mic night sometimes too. So watch for those. We're going to do at least two a year now. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. We've been, well, we've been doing this show for. Since September of 2020. Yeah. September of 2020. Yeah. Um, 
I've been involved since 1991. Yeah. Got involved <laughs> way And back so then. far, we've done weekly show and haven't missed a week yet. Nope. So. Nope. You've been sick sometimes and in Michigan and stuff. but Right. Yeah. So far, we've kept to our, our Friday night schedule. Oh, yeah. Our background. Background. <laughs> well, I, I've been interested in space since I watched um, Armstrong step onto the moon. So. Well, it's Star Trek and, you know. Yeah. But like that. um, that that's what set me up. Um, Caught us off guard of evil. We'll, we'll have to put together something and talk about that sometime yeah. for you. Because yeah. if you're interested, we'll do it. Oh, no, I thought I showed this yeah, one. Yeah, we saw that one. We saw that one, David. I, I posted that. Um, and, oh, Wait interesting. Minute. It showed up, tw it showed up twice now. How funny. Yeah, it showed up twice. Huh. And Cliff's got a, it did come up with a problem. Uh, oh. Uh, what, what did these, is he referring? So something making before? a comment, Cliff? Oh. Hmm. Huh. There might be something going on. And, and I know I've tried to share links and it's given me a problem, but Jeff sees them. So yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And, and yeah, Dave's on YouTube. Cliff's on Facebook. So it might be a problem with StreamYard itself. And you can tell by the little, the little yeah, the, icon right under right, here. Yeah. The, that one says F and the other ones are red with a little TV in them. Yeah. That so, right there, same position, right down there. Huh. Yeah. Um, Very sorry. Uh, we will do our best to to share all of them, unless they're abusive. We don't like that. Uh, this is a family show. <laughs> or they're um, begging for funds, which happened in one show. Yeah, we can't really we can't really help people with that. Yeah. So, oh, more comments. Oh, bye bye, David. Thanks, Dave. Glad you were here this time. Hope everyone's healthy at home. Oh, well, th thanks, Cliff. Oh, thank you. Hey, you for coming out in 2024. Yeah, or if we are Let's ever allowed to go to um, Australia. <laughs> you know. Will they let us in over there? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks so much, everybody. We really appreciate you being here. Watch for more Citizen Science Projects, guests, possibly other things. I got some ideas cooking in my head <laughs> oh, good. And, and we'll see you next week good night good night